Well, that was fast, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I hope everybody is well and warm kicking it fly today. Welcome back to a, another live stream, guys. If you guys are just tuning in, this is the uh, live stream that we're going to discuss. Oh, I got really blasted right before this. Hoo, 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 hoo. <coughs> <coughs> we're going to be talking about drying, curing, and storing your product. Uh, I've just finished a massive 4x4 four four harvest. Filling out... Actually, let's remove this chat here for a second. Da -da 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 uh, <laughs> I just finished uh, filling out and harvesting an entire 4x4 four four tent. This is a tent that uh, I decided I would take one plant and try to maximize maximize my garden space. And so with with without topping... Huh? I managed to fill an entire 4x4 space, and uh, man, man, it feels pretty incredible. And over the course of, say, the last few weeks, I've been thinking pretty heavily about the drying, curing, and storing process that, you know, why not talk about it? So thank you guys for joining me this, uh, this afternoon. I, want to, uh, I wanted to do this live because I feel like, like harvesting and and curing and driving driving and and drying is it, it's kind of it's kind of organic it's it kind of changes and uh the conversation can kind of get a little more in depth with more people and uh there's some things that i may forget about and not touch on so that's why i wanted to do it live so thank you guys everybody for tuning in i appreciate you guys hope you're well and warm kicking it fly as always um but before of course i do get too far into this uh, i want to remind you that I don't show too many plants over here on YouTube anymore, but my Instagram is full of them. If you're curious, you go to Instagram, just search pigeons420. Uh, I've got it in the chat right there. You can see this dreadnought OG that I grew and filled out the entire space. The entire 4x4 was filled. And I didn't top this plant not one time. So for all those people out there that say you have to top your plants in order to maximize the tops and da, 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 that's not true at all. Actually, no, you don't need to top your plants. So needless to say, head over to Instagram, check that out. And you can see the massive plant that I just harvested. Um, before I do get into that, though, I want to I want to give a shout out to the channel sponsors, because if it wasn't for them, I would not be able to grow these incredible plants with just incredible results. So I want to give a huge shout out to Spider Farmer. If you go to spiderfarmer.ca, they are currently having a new year, new growth uh, sale. You use coupon code new gear. You can save some 10% uh, off at checkout, um, but they've got everything from tents to lights. I see an even grinder in here. I personally use the SE series of lights. I use the SE 5000 and this thing did me wonders. It's in my opinion, one of the best lights on the market. It's right here for $650 Canadian which is probably like peanuts in American coins. Um, but uh, I use the SE 5000 and I personally think it's one of the best lights on the market for its price and its quality. If you use promo code pigeons five, you'll also save a few dollars off a of checkout. Um, see if you can stack them together, if you know what I mean. But uh, a huge shout out to Spider Farmer for uh, supporting us with some of the brightest lights for the greatest price at spiderfarmer.ca. Um, also to tag along, uh, one of the most incredible sponsors is AC Infinity. If you go to acinfinity.com, use promo code PIGEONS420. Check out everything, man. In my opinion, they've got the best air circulation systems, the best smart controllers, and you know what? They've got a humidifier that I'll stand behind and these clip-on fans that I think are the cat's patootie. Uh, they're the, the best in the game. Very proud sponsor of PIGEONS420, and if you use promo code pigeons420 you'll save a few dollars off a of checkout go follow him on instagram too hey give him a shout out say thank you for supporting our boy pigeons man appreciate you guys uh you can do that at spider farmer or uh, ac infinity on instagram so huge shout out to them i really appreciate it i would not be able to do these episodes these live streams and just talk a whole bunch of random schniz if it wasn't for them so i appreciate it i appreciate it so now that we got that out of the way uh i wanted to jump right into uh, the the process of drying your product because I think I think this is the first stage of harvest essentially and in my opinion it comes before you actually you 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 take the effort to actually tr chop the plant down the last week or so before I harvest 
I actually don't water. I feel like watering your plants right before harvest is kind of counterintuitive. Um, it, it, it kind of just delays the process. Although we do tell ourselves we want a longer dry period, you don't want it to last forever. And I find if you water your plants right before harvest, uh, that excess moisture is just a bit of a pain in the ass when you go to hang and dry your plants. So I like to take a couple days, typically like three or four days right before I chop my plants and I stop watering just to kind of help that dry process get kick started. So I'm not dealing with these really heavy, moist pots and plants. Um, I personally like to chop it at the base and hang the plant as a whole. It's funny because when I first started harvesting, that was not the case. Um, as many of you know, I was a, a, a large proponent of bud washing and I would take each branch and I would cut them off and I would be washing every single, every single bud in its, as a branch. And that technique ended up speeding up my drying process or uh, yeah, speeding up the drying process because it wasn't drying as a whole plant. It was drying individually. And this was kind of a problem. So since I started cutting the plant as a whole and hanging it as a, you know, as a, as a whole plant, it's been incredible to see just how much, how many, like two to four more days you can add to the dry without, uh, without any effort. So, uh, definitely, definitely try to keep as much of that plant intact as possible. So I got the pasties. Holy jeepers. What happened right before this live stream? I don't know. Um, the, uh, the idea of letting it dry as a whole, I don't even take off any, any fan leaves. I don't take off anything. Some people like to take off the big leaves first. I actually don't. I actually don't. I like to think of those big fan leaves as like a coat as it, as they fall down on top of the plant, they're kind of going to insulate it to help delay that dry period just a little bit more. Um, and so it's going to be a little more consistent in its dry too, you know, so you're not having some parts dry faster than others. So definitely, definitely something to consider. Um, I could see the benefit in removing the big fan leaves first, but I don't remove anything. I just, as soon as it's harvest, chop it, hang it upside down, leave it. Now, no dark or no light. So I'm trying to keep the humidity and the temperature at the 60 game. Okay, I call it the 60 game because it's like 60 freedom units, 60% humidity. If you can keep your environment at that, that's really going to help uh, keep a good consistent dry period. So it's it's completely dark in my tent. I've got my AC infinity inline fan set at two. Okay, so I'm not move. I'm not like I'm not moving air but I'm circulating air, if that makes any sense, which it doesn't. So I'm just trying to keep the air uh, fresh without moving it too much. Any movement of air in a four x four tent is gonna speed up the drying, and I'm not trying to do that. My ideal dry period is gonna be between 10 and 14 days. If I can hit that, I'm gonna be laughing. Good, I'm laughing. So good air circulation, but not air movement, if that kind of makes sense. I know that's counter, like that's kind of, contradictory but you don't want the air to be moving you just want it to be circulating i know i i think we're getting on the same page there so uh try to make sure the inline is a great way to do that because rather than pushing air it's sucking air so i feel like that's less aggressive and it's a lot easier to maintain that that, that the percentage range either in fahrenheit or in humidity percentage when you've got a good four by four sealed tent. Now you could be doing it at any size of tent, but the idea of having a sealed tent ah, is a great, is a great idea. This is probably the first time that I've actually dried in a sealed tent. Typically I just don't have the ability to because I'm harvest. I've got a perpetual system going on where it's like veg tent, flower tent, something harvests. I remove it from the tent, but there's still something going in there. Growing one plant, which was huge. I filled a four by four tent and all I decided to do was chop it down, hang it. And then I took the trellis and I spread it out again. So essentially it's an, it's an upside down scrog right now. I still wanted to spread the buds out and not have them all collapsed in on each other. So, uh, that's, that's one thing new that I'm trying this time that I've never tried before using a scrog to dry the buds. 
Seems to be working well. Seems to be working well. I did stream the entire thing over on twitch.tv slash pigeons420. This was on Saturday, so it's the 27th now. Uh, you could Let me see here. Actually, you could probably get the exact dates. You can see the... Actually, no, you'll find it. You go to twitch.tv slash pigeons420. It's called Cannabis Chop Down. Probably shouldn't have said that word, but I did. So that's what you can search it as, and you'll find it. I did the entire thing live. It was... It was kind of embarrassing, but eh, it was fun all at the same time. Um, in terms of, uh, it was it was very it was very labor intensive. I had to take a saw and I was cutting down this thing like I filled a four by four with one plant. It was pretty incredible. So, needless to say, when do you think they're dry enough? You might ask. Well, personally, I I like to I like to feel them. I like to feel them, and I'm going in there. I've already been in there, so I harvested them five day six days ago and i was in there yesterday just to feel them just to feel them i try to keep the light as low as possible you know i can they can do the feel job without any light give them a good little feel and i could feel that the outside was starting to get crisp but, but there was so much bounce so much moisture in the middle of those buds and things were right on track so stay vigilant keep a good eye on those buds because that's essentially what's going to indicate when you're done. I like to wait until they're crispy on the outside with just a little bounce on the inside. There used to be an old rule of thumb that you would uh, go until the stem would snap. Personally, in my own experience, I feel that that's too late by just a bit. Now, I guess if your definition of snap is snap and then like little little puff of dust or a little puff of of cells goes flying then yeah that's too far but if you twit like if you bend it and there's just like a crack you're it's ready to be harvested it's ready or it's ready to be uh, trimmed up and and put into the jar um personally i i try to wait for that first crack until the bounce, uh, uh, the you got the crisp on the outside with a good build, good bounce in the middle. You know you're they're, they're ready to go. You can try, which I've done, to try to play the game of harvesting them or trimming them down earlier. But unfortunately, I think that's a game you don't want to play. When you start to harvest more and more, you get large amounts of harvest, like say pounds. You're you're not. It's going to be a little bit tedious to essentially, you know. Um, wait uh, uh any longer uh sorry i totally spaced out on what i was talking about what happened before this stream ladies and gentlemen um but essentially it's too dry if you wait until that stem fully snaps i will get that bounce but it was the the mole game if you if you want to try to harvest them off the plant earlier then you're going to be playing the game of whether or not it's going to have been too soon and there's too much moisture retained in those buds. You're going to have to burp them more often. You're, it's going to be a far more stressful situation. Um, it's just not worth it. Some people, I, myself included, I thought, well, what if I can make that cure or that dry even longer? It just means more work, and I, I don't think it's worth it. I think you just get them dry, get them off the plant when they're ready, when they're crisp on the outside with a slight bounce in the middle, put them in the, in the jar. And you know what? More times than not you're going to find that you're still that it's still pulling a lot of moisture out of those buds so you're going to be okay you don't want to dabble with the mold game you take them off the stems too soon and there's just too much mold um now now let's say you made it through the dry period your buds are perfect the stems are right where you want them and now you're ready to throw them in something what are you going to use? What are you going to use? Well, there's a number of methods to cure. I remember back in the day, one of the most um, one of the most utilized methods was a brown paper bag. Um, things have since progressed, and you no longer need to rely on on that kind of technology. But a lot of people still do. So, are you using brown paper bags to cure your stuff to dry, to to get that last little bit of dry out? Are you using mason jars? Have you decided to try out the Grove bags? Are you using like a C vault? Any of those are viable options, but what I would recommend is avoiding plastic. Plastic is so detrimental to trichomes. It's proven that you can have a negative impact on your trichomes by using plastic. They don't like each other. They don't like the that they don't like each other. So, storing your product in 
plastic, whether it's a plastic bag or whether it's a plastic um, uh, container, is a no is a no bueno. Don't don't use plastic. Try to find something to uh, to to utilize that's far more superior. Um, as you guys have noticed, uh, I am going to be trying new methods of curing this year. I have never in my life tried anything other than the glass mason jars. And I think for the first time, I'm going to branch out and I'm going to use grove bags. And I'm going to attempt to use uh, regular mason jars. And I'm going to attempt to use the C vault as well. Now, which one of these is going to work better than the other? I have absolutely no idea, but I do want to get to the bottom of Grove bags. I've I've heard so much about them. They've kind of like they've kind of sprouted up over the course of the last year or so, and it's been thank you for the sub. And it's been uh, it's been uh, kind of shocking to me to see the number of people that have. Um, spoken very highly of these things and they look nothing more than a plastic bag but people I, at first i thought it was just this massive marketing campaign which sure it could have been then i thought well maybe it's just paid actors going around in my comments which i get all the time saying use this use this use this and then people that i know that i trust that i look up to they're using them and they're telling me they're wonderful so I'm like, God dang it. How is this plastic bag doing anything? So I have a few of them. Um, you guys saw the short that I did on YouTube. For some reason, the the don't ask me why the footage was all weird like that, but it was what it was. So I'm going to be using Grove bags this year. And uh, I will tell you exactly what I think of them. It says on their website that once you've got the dry, they're, they're, they're ready for a cure. Once that dry's done, it does the rest. It'll maintain the temperature or the, the humidity and it outgasses, quote unquote, from their website, outgasses the excess hum hum moisture and oxygen. So uh, it is what it is. Comments told me I was wrong, but it says that on their website. Um, I'm curious, man. I'm curious. If this is the way to go, then sign me up sign me up it's not plastic it's some kind of like i don't know some space age show. i have no idea I, I have no involvement with them whatsoever but i'm gonna figure out to see if they are worth it or not and i'm gonna try to use three different methods like a control i would like to get sea vault so sea vault if you're listening and then and then the groves i got the groves at the uh mj bizcon this year so choose your device choose your device just to ensure you're not using plastic so stick around on the channel and i'll keep you posted on my experience using these these bags and these different methods to cure um, I'm, I'm excited i'm excited so as you progress through you know you, you want to understand that vigilance right now you have spent the last like eight months okay uh well six months you know the, the girl that i just grew took me 12 weeks to veg 12 weeks that's four months uh four, eight, 12. Yeah, that's three months. I know how to add. It's three months of time that it took me to grow that one plant. So just in veg. And then I had to add another two months on to get through flower. So we're talking five months. So you've done five months of work. The, the hard work is not done. Now, the most important thing is your vigilance. You need to be so aware of what's going on in your garden right now. And what or not, what's going on in those jars, those bags in, going on in your your going on with your harvest right now because you need to make sure that you're burping accurately and the reason for that is because you know uh if you're not getting or dissipating or getting rid of the excess moisture and the the oxygen the the it's gonna go it's gonna go bad you're gonna get mold in there and everyone put your hand up I, we've all molded weed and if you haven't you know bird speed man because it's like you probably will. I don't want to be the negative Nancy here, but you you, it, you got to understand that it, it, it's very tough. You know, it, it, we get we get complacent and so on and so forth. But don't let it happen to you. So, needless to say, vigilance is key. When I my routine when I pull my plants down, <laughs> sorry, 
sorry when after i uh after i get through the cure or get to the cure is that i am going to start burping every every single day every day once a day i'm going to come in here i'm going to look at my jars because i'm still using jars right haven't tried anything different yet i look at my jar and i'm thinking all right open it up and i personally like to kind of rotate the jars a little bit to let the buds separate so that there's no buds stuck together i find this happens quite a bit particularly right after harvest uh, right after you chop them and put them in there there's still a little bit of moisture and they stick together so open up those jars let them tumble a little bit just a light tumble okay and that's going to allow those to separate and then it's I, I set all the jars up with the lids off on their sides okay i put the, the jars on their sides because i feel like there's more surface area across the top of those buds rather than keeping them straight up i'm going to leave them out for about 30 minutes or so or until the, those buds are back to where they were supposed to be in regards to that that moisture and crisp level where they were when i put them in there the first time it's about 30 minutes put the lids back on put them away back in that nice cool dark area you know you want to make sure that it's not going to be too hot you don't want to burn off any of those terpenes you don't want anything to just get degraded and uh, and you want it to be dark for the same reasons okay you're going to do that every day until you notice that when you go to open that jar the next day, those buds aren't mo aren't that moist anymore. They're still the way they were when you put them in the first time. Typically, that takes about a week, four day, four to four days to about a week. At that point, you're gonna say, okay, seal that jar up. Vigilance is key. You're still keeping an eye. At that point, I find I tend to find it's gonna be every few days that you're gonna open up that jar and you're gonna repeat that process. If you notice that they're a little bit stuck together, give a little tumble, let them sit about 30 minutes or so once they're back do that up if you find that when you every time you go in there every couple of days they're dry they're back they're at where, that's going to be once a week process okay then you're starting to look into a long-term storage are you going to be using uh bavita packs are you going to be using those little like uh, whether it's bavita integra boost or you know whatever these packs are that you're going to be using are you going to be using those okay uh in my opinion those are for long-term storage um I, uh, if I'm going to be using mason jars, typically, unless you're sealing those off, you know, canning the jars themselves, you're going to need some form of hydration pack in there. Uh, whether it's Bovita, whether it's Integra Boost, whether it's, there's a, there's not a million, but there's a few different kinds. Um, whether you want to go with Integra over Bovita because Bovita is like a salt-based rather than um, uh, Integra, which is not salt-based. And I'll argue that salt takes the moisture out of buds faster. Da, 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 da. They're moisture packs. Determine whether you're going to use them. I also like to ensure that I actually like to put those little hydro, uh, sorry, those little moisture meters inside the jars as well, because then I can see exactly what the humidity is inside those jars. Looking for about that 60 to 62% humidity for long-term storage. You know, 62% is like that, that, that golden number. Um, it, it's, you'll funny, it's, it's funny how during growing and there, 60 is a number that you're going to find that you use a lot. Um, but anyways, you know, 62% is typically that, 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 that point where you want to keep the jar on the inside so that you can keep it for long-term term storage. Now, even if you're doing long-term storage, you know, it's not going to sit in there for months and months and months and you're never going to look at it. I would still be looking at your product at least once a month. And by looking, you're, you're getting really good at it. So it's like, let's say you did harvest a, a pound, a couple pounds. You want to make sure that you're giving a good visual inspection. This isn't like wine, okay? You can't, you, you can cork wine, put it in there and it's set forever. You just leave it. No, no. You just want to make sure that your herb is going to be monitored, okay? Um, Chris is using, Mr. Grow It, my dear friend, is using uh, a, a fridge called the Canatrol. He's talked tons about it. Uh, I'm definitely going to get my hands on it. Um, but it's essentially a long-term storage container. That'll it, It's a fridge. It's kind of like a, a, humidor, a humidor, if you will, a humidex, humidor, whatever those things are for cigars, that'll long-term store your product. Um, that's definitely something to look into. OK, uh, I, I, I think there's an advantage there, you know, when it comes to long term storage. And if you're going to be harvesting pound pounds, I think having a way to maintain that over a long period of time isn't a bad idea. OK, 
So yes, uh, find what works best for you, and then and then you're gonna you're gonna work with it, right? Um, and then and, and so go there. Uh, so so try to determine whether you're not with whether you're gonna go for. Oh no no sorry I'm skipping ahead. Um, someone might ask how long are you gonna store it before you test it? Uh, this is kind of one of those things where it's like it's gonna come down to you. Okay, it's going to come down to your preference and it's going to come down to, you, you know, what you're looking for as a product. I personally, rule of thumb, no sooner than like two weeks. Once you harvest your plant and you get it into the into the jars, two weeks, two weeks. That's that's kind of the minimum for me before I'm even going to sample or test anything. Some people, now, now I understand it's hard to go hungry with a fridge full of food. So if your supply is minimal, maybe that time that you're going to allow for the cure is going to be less. But that's why I always say that one of the proponents to growing great product is having great product on hand because you're never going to get all the way through the veg, flower, and cured and dry state, dry and cure stage if you don't have any product. You need something to be able to take care of yourself so you're not pinching into your supply. Okay, so two weeks, that's when you should sample it. That's when you should be like, okay, okay, this looks like it's 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 a decent smoke. If you sample it any sooner than that, I just don't feel like you're getting an accurate representation of what that smoke really, really is. It's full of chlorophyll, it's still it's still moist, it's not it's not ideal, right? So that's where, you know, that's where I think, you know, two weeks, but but ideally. 30 days minimum, 30 days minimum before you try to put your hands into the cookie jar. I feel at 30 days, <clears throat> you've had the ability to really pull out the potential of your cannabinoids, uh, whether it's the flavors, you know, your terp, your flavonoids, your terpenes, all, all kinds, you know, all your flavors, everything is going to get pulled out so much more once you give it a cure, get rid of the chlorophyll and get and get some good good idea what your product's going to be. That's that thirty day mark, and I really feel like that's a that's a hard line. That's a hard line. Um, now people can say, how long can you store it for? Personally, not um, by not long term storing my mason jars. So by canning them, but boiling and sealing the lids, you you're not getting more than like six, eight, ten, ten months out of those jars. They're simply going to let all the moisture out. Uh, it's not it's not an ideal long-term solution for drying uh, or curing because they just don't retain moisture very well. A year, not a chance. Uh, your, your bud's gonna be dry by a year. I have herb that's in my in my drawer that's been there for a year and it is, it's, it's prehistoric. It's petrified at this point, you know what I mean? Uh, if I so much as like try to like grab it out of the bag or out of the jar, it's going to like disintegrate in my hand. Um, but stuff that's been there anywhere between like six months and, you know, four to eight months still has, you know, a, a fair bit of life in it. You know, definitely want a vacuum seal, definitely want a vacuum seal or can them or any way, uh, any sort of way that retains that moisture. You can boil them. There's a whole canning process, but I would recommend it if you're going to do long term storage. Now, something I feel like is important to mention that maybe doesn't get mentioned enough. This is a good time to keep these things out of reach of children. Okay. Also, handsy friends, spouses. Okay. Um, essentially, this is stuff that you're going to be wanting to pay attention to. But you know, you want to put it high enough on the shelf that it's not going to garner any attention. You don't want to show all your friends. You want to leave this stuff away so that it can dry, it can cure, it can do its own thing. And, and of course, because it's just sitting in mass amounts, make sure that it's it's out of reach of children. You know, you don't want your kids to get into it. You know, heaven forbid they end up getting sick. That's the worst thing that's going to happen to them. But do ensure that it's out of reach of them. And then, of course, if it, the more you have, the more the more eyes that are on you. OK, um, there's no other way to put it. It's amazing how many more friends you have when when it's harvest time. OK, so be sure to just keep your mouth shut is the best way to do it. You know, if uh, you're growing in a, in a place that's not that hospitable, then you can't say to nobody. OK, you can't say nothing to nobody. And I understand this is a very exciting time for you. This is a very exciting time for your family. And I get it. I get it. But this is the time now where most people 
end up losing all that hard work that they've put in to either law enforcement or, you know, uh, theft because they don't keep their mouth shut. Okay. So it, I understand it's an exciting time. Include the people that you love and trust, but don't go blabbing around to everybody. And even I don't, I have every right to be growing in my garden. I have every right, every right. I have a medical right. I have a recreational right, everything, but I still keep my freaking mouth shut because no one needs to know. Nobody needs to know. It's just, it's a very, it's a very vulnerable time right now in the garden. And last heaven forbid you need anybody to come up there and mess it with you. So, so when it comes to drying, when it comes to curing, and when it comes to storing, the most advice or the best advice that I could give you is to keep your head on, keep your eyes open and pay attention to the product. The game's not over yet. Okay. You need to get through these next few weeks to be able to pull out all that greatness within that product that you spent so much time growing. Just stay vigilant. It's okay to go back and watch videos or go back and take notes and go back and reread and so on and so forth to make sure that you've got the next few steps set out uh, confidently because it, this is not, it's not downhill from here. Okay. It's, uh, it's still, it's still a constant battle to ensure that you're going to make it to the finish line with the product that it was meant to be. So keeping your eyes open to avoid mold, to make sure that you're giving it a good cure and just stay vigilant, stay vigilant. And I think you're going to be okay. I think you're going to be okay. Um, now I want to pass the question off to you guys. I just blabbered on for the last 40 minutes in regards to uh, 30 minutes in regards to, uh, my process of, of, of drying, curing, and um, storing is, do you guys do anything differently? Have you tried the Grove bags? Have you tried the sea vaults? Have you perfected your method of growing in a mason jar? I really want to hear from you. I want to know. And, I, and I've got the comments going right now. Uh, I, I want to hear. Um, what is your method for getting this all done? And uh, I want to thank you guys. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, can you hit that like button for me, man? I just really wanted to get through that whole process without getting too, too distracted. However, I may or may not have enjoyed just a little rip of this, the lettuce right before the uppies. And uh, yeah, it may or may not have had an impact on my, uh, on my train of thought. But uh, I saw a wonder bunch of wonderful people in the chat. It's great to see you guys swinging by. I can THC is here. Welcome to the Grow Tent is here. I see Dave Hansen here, man. Matt's Green Space is here. Sean's here. Hippie Sean, I see you, man. It's great to see all of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Awesome Badass says, uh, I'm, trying to gr I'm trying the grow bags for the first time this weekend. Been using mason jars. They work great. I'm looking forward to the ease of the bags. And that's kind of what I'm getting at too, man. That's kind of what I'm getting at. sounds like this is going to be pretty easy. You know, sounds like you've got to get the right product into the bag, right? It has to be perfectly dried. It has to be perfect to go in there. So it's not like it does all the work for you, right? It does some work, but it doesn't do all the work for you. So it needs to be ready to be cured, then goes in the bag, right? So, um... Danger Ranger, I use five gallon buckets with gamma lids before jarring. Okay, okay. I've never even heard of the gamma lid. I've never even heard of that. Um, grateful, try heat sealing my grove bag. Trying heat, try heat sealing my grove bags for the first time. Fingers crossed. Yeah, you certainly need to heat seal them. Or, yeah, I said vacuum seal yesterday on from the stash, but I meant to say heat seal. You don't want to vacuum seal it. Uh, not yet, anyway. I could see. I've never tried vacuum sealing my product, but maybe, maybe you could. Uh, Cam Z, good to see you, man. Uh, chop, long dry, into a box for 24, 48 hours. Grove bag, done. I like that process, man. Gary Barton, uh, lay the open jar on its side. The heavy, moist air flows out. The light, dry air flows in. Yeah, Gary, great advice. Yeah, I recommend the same thing. Lay it on its side. Mo mo most surface area, too. Uh, Matt's Green Space, I have a Grove bag my grow me sent me and i do plan to test it this run okay i'm interested to hear about everyone's results uh, honestly you don't i don't hear too many negative things about it which is why i was s skeptical you know um so happy grow 420 second run with the grow bags definitely need properly dried flour first curador xl for storage but i will be purchasing the canatrol very soon for dry cure and storage well i'm i'm happy to hear that i am certainly going to try to get my hands on one as well uh 
I first thing I asked Christopher was like, does it hold beer? <laughs> Cause like I got this beer fridge fridge right beside me. And if I put the can of troll there and I got nowhere to put my beer, I'm going to be hooped, you know? Um, mech mod, Mike, love the channel, brother. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate the love. Um, I like the Terps better in the bags, but they dry up after time. Okay. Are you heat sealing them? No, uh, dog pounds. I would be curious. Uh, still on burb a day over in prohibition land. It's so worth the effort. Ah, Laszlo Woodbine. Laszlo. That reminds me of like early Grand Theft Auto, man. I like that name. Uh, chasing turbs. What's up, gromies? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, all in, all three in one, no brainer, right? Three in one, baby. Three in one, man. Um, be stealth. Yeah, Jason Smith. I'm sorry. I'm just going up a few to see. Uh, I, I know you guys were participating along with me this entire episode, giving some great advice. Um, <laughs> six months too long for me, Motley Grow says. Um, yeah, six months. Uh, definitely, if you can keep it, if you can keep it moist for six months, uh, she's a keeper. I'm sorry, I'm running with that. Uh, if anyone is curious about the proper tool for sealing, it's you. It's called an impulse sealer. They're roughly twenty bucks USD. Okay, okay, I didn't know that either. Um, you can throw a bavita in the grove bags. Yes, yes, that makes total sense. Now, grove bags does suggest that they would like their their material keeps it at like I had these bags somewhere. Oh, right here. It keep, it says right on the bag. Oh, look. Look at this, guys. I have weed in this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, it says right on it that it says 58 to 60%. Whoop! My pretty face. So right there. So I don't know if it means, you know, I, well, it says that it means that it keeps it at that percentage. So, yep, yep. Uh, I'm not heat sealing. I want to reuse the bag, but I am sealing it, folding it, and putting it in a plastic tub airtight container. That's what I'm doing. Rico Rodriguez. Uh, great comment. Um, I, I'm sure that would be better than just not heat sealing it, you know, um, or, or not, not, or, I'm sure that's better than just closing it. That's definitely an idea. hundred percent. Um, I don't, is it working? That would be the next question. P, I know one of the owners of Grove Bags. I can get you samples to try if you want some bigger bags. Um, I believe I sent them an email. I sent them an email uh, we'll, or a, a message or something because I had this harvest coming up. I, I, I sent Seavault message too. So we'll see if they can get a hold because I want to sample their products to see if, uh, if, you know, it's all they're cracked up to be or which is better. You know, that's the more important thing to me is if I'm going to go spend some money, which one should I buy? You know, that's that's what I want to know. Um, guys, thank you so much for all the likes, man. I see 160 people in here. Thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. We we're talking drying, curing, and storage, your products. Um, I gave my opinions, and, uh, and now we're really just hashing out, you know, what was storage containers at this point. Um, I don't think it holds humidity at that, but they work pretty well for evaporating the bad gas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Who knows what they actually do? This is why I'm going to test them so I can say with with certainty. 101 likes, everybody. Thank you guys for joining this afternoon's uh, live discussion. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for hitting that like button, man. It not only helps the channel grow, it also pushes it through the algorithm. So if anybody's searching YouTube right now, um, if the chat's popping off and the likes are good, it recommends this, this conversation to, to others. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, we need 60 more likes then we got 108, 111. Let's keep going, baby. What, what? Yeah. Dave Hansen. Great to see you, man. Grow up, uh, grown up grows. Uh, what about Bavita packs? Um, okay. So, uh, m humidity pack, or unless you're speaking specifically about Bovita, uh, humidity packs are a great asset. Um, particularly if you're li like trying to use a product or trying to use a, um, uh, a, 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 a jar that's not going to seal things tight. Right. 
It's just the problem that I have with any humidity pack, and this is why I'm not going to speak directly on Bovita. I, I have an issue with all humidity packs. And for no reason other than people get complacent. A long time ago, I heard an analogy that um, uh, someone who gets lost and stranded in the wilderness, it, if, if statistically, if they have a gun, if they have a firearm, they are less likely to survive than someone who does not have a firearm. And you might be asking yourself, well, what? How? How? The firearm provides an, a, a, a false sense of security, a false sense of confidence. And I, and I compare the Bovita pack, the exact same thing to that analogy. I feel like more people fail with, with humidity packs than don't because they assume that the humidity pack's just gonna do all the work. They're just, it's gonna, you, you can just chop off your buds, throw them in a jar, throw in a humidity pack, twist off the lid, you're done done baby walk away walk away uh and then they they go back they come back to their their they come back to their pack or their jar a week later and they're like what mold what i hate moisture packs i hate insert brand here and it's like i can almost bet you that it had nothing to do with the humi humidity pack and it, it had to do with your lack of vigilance your lack of 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 attention to what was going on um so i have no problem with a humidity pack i think i think they there's a place for them you should use them but the problem is is that people get complacent when they use them and they just think oh the humidity pack is going to do all the work for me no the humidity pack is going to do one thing and it's going to try to relegate or at least try to manipulate or manage the humidity at a very fine percentage point. We're talking, we're talking within what, 5%? Like if you, like, I'm almost certain if you think it's going to change, if you, if you, if you think you've got a 90% humidity and it's going to bring it to a 60% humidity, you got another thing coming. That's not what it's designed for. So that's the problem that I have. So I do believe people should use humidity packs, but I also think that you should keep keep an eye on your product, stay vigilant. So it, it's a catch-22. I see a lot of people bitch about Bovita, uh, well, Bovita in particular, but it's a moisture pack thing. It's a moisture pack thing. So anyways, um, that's, 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 that's my analogy. That's where I, that's where I stand on humidity packs. Bovita, Integra, it doesn't matter. Insert product here. Uh, I think there's a place for it. I think we can utilize them to our advantage, but we just need to understand that it's not going to do the work for us. Okay. Uh, a lot of folks think once they harvest the job, it's done. They don't realize they're halfway there. Superior buds, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're halfway there, man. You're halfway there. So there's still a lot of work that goes into the process. A lot of work that goes into the process. And, and, and it's important to just stay on top of your game. It's not done until you're laying on the floor, passed out. Because your high is like hoots, bro. Uh, that's when your job's complete. Congratulations. Your high is, your high is a kite. All right? Your job is done. Okay? So, yeah. That's when you're done. So, uh, Mech Mod Mike, question. Does uh, anyone else struggle with germination of seeds during the winter? I use a heat map, but still have problems getting them to pop. Um, personally, Mech, I, I don't have issues germinating at all. Um, I have a 99% germination rate, and the reason it's 99% is because you still can't germinate bad seeds. Um, heat mats are good. I actually really enjoy one. mine. I have one from AC Infinity, and I think it's fantastic. I actually love it. It's probably more so related to the lack of moisture in your envi environment rather than the heat. Um, I believe that we need to, you know, you need to put a dome over your seedlings, um, as particularly in the wintertime, particularly in the summer if you're dealing in des desertish conditions. Um, a dome is going to go a long way because it's going to ensure that you have a microclimate around that that little, little, little baby there. Um, temperature's got to be high, and so does the humidity. It's got to, it's got to be like a nice little tight hug, because essentially, I like to consider it as um, like Amazon conditions. And this is why I like to put a dome on it, because if you're gonna try to fog out your veg tent, 
it's going to be detrimental to your entire setup. You're going to have moisture coming down the walls and stuff. Just put a dome on it and ensure that your humidity is way, way up. So 70 plus uh, under that dome. 90% works great too. Because remember that there's going to be lots of air. You're constantly spraying more water in there. For me in the dome, it's like often twice a day. I got to spray in there. So yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be what I would consider. I, I bet you it's closer to the humidity rather than the temperature, um, and just create a microclimate that's going to allow you to really spray the inside of the dome. Yeah, sorry, that's what I that's what I meant. Spray like you're, you're going to open up your dome. I, I I did this all visually in my head. So I open up the dome, put the nozzle. This is a spray bottle. Spray that, and it's going to fill the entire dome with uh, humidity. Remember too, a, a a quick little cheat code, if you will. It's a hack. You cannot drown a seed, okay? You can't, you can't. You can't have too much water to a seed, okay? Once there's a tap root, it's not a seed anymore. You got to plant, okay? Um, while it's a seedling, you cannot drown it. So moisture, 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 moisture. And as long, until that seedling pops out and you got a little, then dial it back. You could, Then you need a watering routine. But until that point... There we go. Until that point, you you cannot um, you cannot you cannot drown it. So, good luck. Good luck. Yep. Seedlings need jungle vibes. Grateful from the from the chat says, and I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, that's a very good question. Very good question. I don't. Uh, JMB handcrafted. I don't have issues with germinating. Just seems to take a day or two longer in my limited experience. Uh, yeah, it's typically rule of thumb for me is three days. Um, but rule of thumb is not always something that can be applied. I, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have germination in less than a week, no matter what, seven days after seven days, I start to lose faith in that, that, that seedling that it's, it's not going to make it. So definitely, uh, keep a close eye. I don't say give up on it after a week. Don't give up. Um, I'm just saying I start to lose confidence. So keep that in mind. Um, I have a small propagation tent. Yeah, smart, smart. Having that, having that, having that extra environment is so good. Can you answer the germination question in interpretive dance? Oh gosh, Keith, Keith, I would love to, bro. I would love to. Lots of water. Look, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I don't know why you guys put up with me. Sometimes I don't know why. Sometimes I question it. Um, so yeah, needless to say, uh, that's that's germination in a nutshell. <laughs> oh God, I'm not living that one down, huh? No. Uh, interpretation needed. Yes, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Honor Roll, man. That's our channel member over there. Channel membership. That's why he's got that iconic uh, king pigeon next to his name. Uh, thank you to to all of our members over here on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. You can join. Uh, actually, if you just press the, the join button right there, oh, it's right there. Uh, I think it's right here. Um, help support the channel. You get access to content, uh, a day before everybody else. And, uh, we have a community tab. We have a community tab too, uh, where we, we talk a bunch of stuff and yeah, let you know what I'm thinking about and all those kinds of things. So if you want to join the channel and, uh, and help support the show, I appreciate you. Uh, it's keeping off of me. It's keeping me off of OnlyFans. All right. Okay. Every day I get a little bit closer. All right. Uh, but keep me, keep me alive. Keep me alive, please. Please. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. But why I'm not desperate actually, which leads me to my next segment. Uh, no, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors guys. <laughs> Keeping me off OnlyFans is uh is our proud sponsors AC Infinity man AC Infinity got some of the best equipment in the game okay whether it's air ventilation whether it's smart controllers whether it's circulation uh, they've got you 
covered, man. Uh, in my opinion, they've got the smartest, bestest smart controller in the game, the Controller uh, 69 Pro. If you head over to acinfinity.com, use promo code PIGEONS420, you'll save a few dollars off at checkout. You'll help support the show. If you Check them out on Instagram too, AC Infinity. There's some pretty cool pe people over there, and uh, they're a proud sponsor of the show, and I appreciate them greatly. Uh, huge shout out to Spider Farmer as well. If you go to spiderfarmer.ca, uh, you can check out everything that they have over there. Spider Farmer is expanding their product line every single month, it seems like, and uh, they're always keeping us fresh in the game. I used the SE5000 for this cycle, this run for my 4x4 tent. And as you guys know, I harvested an entire 4x4 tent full, full. Like they, from wall to wall to wall, one plant. And I did it with this light right here. And for 650 bucks Canadian beaver coins, uh, I think it's a fantastic price. If you use promo code PIGEONS5, you'll save off like 10% on checkout. And I also believe they're running a promotion right now. So you might be able to stack those promo codes. Got to give it a try. It's new year, new growth. 10% off. Use new gear promo code as well. Try to stack those puppies, man. See if you can even get even more off. And thank them for being a sponsor of this channel as well at uh, Spider Farmer Official on Instagram, man. I'm telling you, man, I got some of the best sponsors in the game, and I love shouting them out. Um, the new 2x4 light looks awesome on Spider Farmer. I I don't want to go on about it too much, but personally, I, they, they've got this new uh, rack system. Like, you can, like, shelves. Uh, and then you can put the lights in the shelves and everything. Oh, they had it up. And I, that's what I'm really interested in. Uh, where is it? Oh, 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 I might actually find it. Nope. Darn it. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Uh, is it grow kit? Grow tent? It was a shelf. It was like a vegging shelf. And I was like, oh. But I don't see it here right now. Um. Anyways, uh, yo, what's up? Chilbert UK, welcome to the chat, my friend. The join button was about the same distance, but the opposite hand, your camera might be flipped. Dang it. Dang it. It's over here. <laughs> uh, thanks for even looking at it. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, so needless to say, uh, harvesting, drying, curing, um long-term storage it's probably my favorite part of gardening in general because it's the it's the time now when you walk into your garden you're smelling crazy smells you're getting some of those powerful powerful terpenes and let me tell you the more you spend time with it the more you touch them it just it gets so mm, it gets so so addictive i love this process i love this plant and i'm telling you um it, it, it's so important to be able to harness the power of growing your own medication and or even this product and that that, that just makes something you know it's just something so special about it so i encourage you to do the same and uh and 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 push the limits to what you think is possible um yeah, it makes me just want to start biting off buds, Astral. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I always say if you to bring me over to your garden, I might just eat off your buds. <laughs> ah, who knows? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me uh, for today's episode. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys for joining in on the conversation. If you did not know, uh, I go live every single night over on twitch.tv slash pigeons420. That's me over there. I'll even drop you a link so you can come find it. If you're interested, uh, this conversation doesn't have to end. Okay. Uh, we talk all things, flower, life, plant, you name it, culture, science, uh, all over there on Twitch every single night. So come check it out. Come join the conversation. But more importantly, thank you for being you, for supporting me and bring in some of the best damn positivity a guy could ask for, man. Until next time, I appreciate you guys watching. Much love. Stay medicated, eh? Because uh, guess what? Life's better that way. <laughs>